So thank you for joining us, and we love just studying the Word and having our devotion tonight with you. So the name of our lesson tonight is called Magnetic. Magnetic. How many of you have ever met someone that was magnetic? Someone that people were just drawn to. Yeah, and it's because... For one, they had they were positive, they were excited, right. and there was just something about them that drew you to them. And tonight, we want to talk about uh, what's powerful inside of us that makes that happen. Right. But the other thing is, there's not just there's some people that are positively magnetic, and other people that are negatively magnetic. You well, know, they detract. They repel you. They it's, push it's, you away. There's one thing in attracting, and the other can detract. Right. You know, it made me think of that. Um, that lady that's someone says she can't you know she she always says something positive we'll talk about the positive first <laughs> well let's let's talk about the magnetic so that we let's talk about we, that we, first we have an understanding of it so uh you realize that the earth has a magnetic a magnetic <laughs> magnetic a magnetic pull pull in it so there's a, mag, a magnetic pull in the earth's atmosphere and the way that they make a compass is they create the compass so that the needle in that compass is drawn toward the magnetic pull of the North Pole. So when you take that compass out, it automatically points whatever direction north is because of that, magnetic that, force. that magnetism, that field there that's pulling it toward it. So it's a pull. Right. It's a pull. And so... You know, I thought it was so interesting, and I don't know why this word came to me, but then when it started unfolding, it's, it helps me to understand um, more about it. But So I looked at a video on how magnets were made, so we're, we're not going to be um, scientific on you, detail, no, but, but just, just real you, brief. Let me give you the Reader's Digest version of how this works. So when they're making a magnet, they take these minerals from the earth. They take iron, they take copper, they take cobalt, they take nickel. They take aluminum, titanium, and sulfur, and they put them all in this oven. That's it's an electromagnet or it's an electric induction furnace, and they put it in, and then that creates a pulsating electromagnet field that heats up to 3,000 degrees wow. and turns all those metals into liquid. And then they take that liquid and pour it into a mold, and then after that hardens, after the mold hardens, they take those pieces that now all those metals are combined and they take those and they charge them with a you moved it on me <laughs> they, 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 charge them, this. they charge them it's an electromagnetic charge and so they they put that in it and man it becomes a magnet and it will draw isn't that interesting but what i think is interesting even more so is that do you know that all those minerals are found in our human body they are found in us i, I just think it's so yeah. amazing so there is a magnetic pull well things that happen and that things that take place in, in the, the natural, natural have a spiritual correlation that's right. so we have everything in us that creates a magnet right so the question becomes is what are we being drawn to or what are we being pulled to so just just for an, a note right now to, for you to remember that iron, that's one of the minerals that's in a magnet, is one of the most, it's the most important. And you know that iron in our body, it helps to make blood. Wow. And so just think of that word iron. You'll, you'll, uh, yeah. we'll remember come back Geritol? to Remember Geritol? Yeah. You had iron poor blood, take Geritol? Yeah, it was iron. I mean, so, um, if pe once again, if people say that you're magnetic, you're drawn to them, and no, they're drawn to you. I mean, they're drawn to you. you can <laughs> we get our magnets and show? Oh, yeah. Let me. Okay. So, well, I'd like to. I'd rather do that a, a little bit later. Okay. Because I, I, there's something I want to show with that. So, it's not magic. It's magnetic. Well, and we can. I mean, we can do. We can show them. Like, you know, so you've got these and, you know, you let go and it's just drawn. And, and there's a huge pull to it. But let, I, I want to save that other part for a little bit later. So I'll show you something else here in a minute. Okay, so uh, think about this. There was a, a lady that was negative and at the church. And you, you may have shared this before, but I think it's a really good illustra illustration. She's not with us today. It's been many, many years ago. 
but uh, we've learned a valuable lesson from it. So I was talking to her and I asked her how she was doing. It was a simple, straightforward question, but she said, man, I'm doing horrible. Said my kids won't listen to me. They don't pay no attention when I'm trying to tell them stuff. And, she, and I mean, man, and she just started in on a list of stuff. It wasn't just that. I mean, she started complaining about everything. And I looked at her and I said, I said, sister, you've got to be doing help too. Yeah, everything was wrong with her. And she, she said, I looked at her and I said, sis, you've got to be doing better than that. Jesus is alive. And I, I walked away. So the next Sunday, I came back and I asked her, I said, how are you doing today? And she looked at me and she said, after what you said to me last Sunday, I ain't even going to tell you how I am. <laughs> so some folks are always going to be negative. Now, th there's a difference between being honest and and sharing something that you want somebody to pray about. Yes. But that's not what she was doing. She was venting, man. She was just spilling it off. But there was another lady that she was known for not, she, she said something good about everyone. She could find something good to say about everybody. And so this, they were going to just catch her in, okay, this guy was a rascal and, and uh, well, he actually died, but he was on earth. He wasn't a um, very good man. Very good man. <laughs> but they said, I bet she can't say anything good about him. And, and so she, what, she paused a little no, bit. No, they asked her about it. They said, what did you think about so-and-so? Yeah, and she said, um, well, he was a good whistler. <laughs> <laughs> There's something she could find because, she, you know, she was exciting. She was vibrant. She, you know, she was a positive person. So people attracted to her. Um, so I, it made me think of whenever Rick and I first met. Um, so whenever we, whenever I first laid eyes on him, I, we was, it was in church and I just turned my head around to look and I had, you know, never met, met him before. As soon as I looked at him, I got to use it. Okay. <laughs> you don't want me to use the prop just yet, but, but anyway, so there was that. I felt that draw on my heart. It was, I felt that, you don't want to talk about that now, but that is a weird feeling. Uh -huh. So I felt that drawing and I felt something leap in my heart. And of course I was only 14 years old. He was 18. And, and I didn't know that. Yeah, he always liked to stress that. But, um, but I remember our first date and he put his arm around, he put his arm okay. around to back. Let's specify what happened here. I was backing up. That was before there were backup cameras. So I put my arm like this to look around to back up. And that was attractive. And when, and when I when I looked like this, when I, I put my like arm around, this. she she turned around and she looked like this. And before I knew we what were, had happened, it was that magnet. Look, <laughs> this happened. It was like, no, nope, it's the other side. <laughs> I mean, he, that's when. Before, look, I, I'm like part. this. She turns, and when she turns, and I. You know, and I'm like this, and, and I'm looking. Then all of a sudden, she just reached in and kissed me right on the yeah, right. No, <laughs> He made the first kiss, but anyway. I, oh, but I got was, your lipstick all over there me. Was, now. A, there was an attraction already that I was feeling, and so it's that feeling when two people obviously are attracted. It it was a God attraction. I mean, it was by God's <laughs> God design. No. <laughs> no, it was by God's design. Who we know after thirty, almost thirty nine years yeah. later. But, uh, so if we're negative, we detract, don't we? We don't right. attract. Or if we're critical, we detract. You know, if, if you're a critical person, people don't want to be beside you. They don't, no. It's like, oh, wait, here they come. Or if they're negative, Here's here they the come. only seat that's available. So, oh, uh, well, I'll, I'll stand. No. Yeah, so there's that connection that we can feel, you know, to some people. And so it's, it's like two magnetic forces that are inside of us. So remember that I, what I told you that they are, there are, even with a magnet, we have the same minerals in our body. So we are like that magnet. There are two forces forces within us, yes. and it's our spirit and it's our flesh. Which our flesh is our sinful nature, but that's our two the two forces. So there, there's a part of us. Now think about it. We're created of heaven and earth. Right. Okay. So God created us out of dirt. He, he creates us from the dust. dust of the earth and then he breathes into us so there's there's the breath of heaven is in us so there are these two and and that's and and you have to remember this that's why god made us to be a free moral agent there is something we need to decide yes 
where we're going to be drawn or where we're going to be pulled to. So there's a battle that ranges in us between good and evil, or if you will, the spirit and the flesh. So like and I've heard so you say, if you look at, we're made of heaven and earth. Right. So it's the two, the two forces. Okay. Um, so go ahead and read. So um, Psalm 73 and 28. Okay, so but it is good for me to draw near to God. This is the spirit man. It's good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare your works. So it's telling you, draw close to God. You know, the closer this magnet, the closer this magnet gets to th that other magnet, the more force it is that's pulling it that way. And so yes. we have to draw nigh to God. Don't draw forget near. that part. We, we have to draw near to God. We, you know, we're way out over here someplace, and God's over here. We can't hang out over here. Well, I'm sorry. We can't wait. Hang it. Yeah, I have my hand in front of your face. Yeah, but we can't, we can't hang out over here waiting for God to come. It says draw near. He's, he's, he's come. To, he's, he's made the sacrifice. He sent his son. Yes. But now we have to draw near to him. And as we do, we feel that pull yes. pulling us toward him. Yes. So, but on the other hand, the other hand our flesh... James 1, 14 through 15 says, But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, it brings forth death. Have you ever experienced that in your life where you felt that draw? And, and you weren't intending to do that. Right. You know, you weren't intending to be drawn in that direction. But <coughs> it's not COVID. <laughs> 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 you felt that pull, but then it was entertained. First, it, remember, first it's a thought, then it becomes an action, and from the action becomes a habit. Habit, our character, and from the character, our destiny. So, and then what the enemy wants to do, remember, is to steal, kill, and destroy us. And so he's trying to. It, it's it's like when it's full grown, whether it's there's a death someplace, whether it's it's a literal or spiritual death. You feel that. But it all started right. with that pull, that force that's trying to pull so, us away. So hold this just a second. You got that? Hold that up. So think about this. It's like, okay, here's the flesh, here we are, and here's God. So there is a tug of war yes. that's going on between us. And if we get closer to that part of our flesh, guess what's going to happen? Oh, oh sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, Pinch me. <laughs> but it, it's going it's to, tough, we're man. going to be pulled in. Yeah. That's why it says draw nigh unto God. Because if we draw to near. him, or we draw near to him, then He's we're going to be pulled to him. He's going to pull us in. Right. So Galatians 5 and 17 says the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other so you are not free to carry out your own good intentions. So it's not like, okay, when something happens, we understand the battle that is within us. And it's not that God is saying, oh, they're just getting it wrong again, but it's that's the fight. Well, Paul you know, talked about that fight goes on every day. He makes a statement, I die daily. What's he dying to? He's dying to the flesh. He's he's got to. He's saying, I got to stay away from this because if I don't, it's going to pull me in. So I have to die out to that. I have to get away yes, from it. Yes. So <clears throat> then that's why we're being fought. And I, I was thinking of this. It's like the sacred versus the secular. You know, we're pulled in by the world, and we can easily be done. I mean, through well, through media, through you know, just we can have our own uh, well, opinions, ideas, but we can be drawn into the world's. Just think, think about the ideology right now of the world and the spirit that's in the world. It used to be, back when we were kids, that if you heard something about God, it was in a good context. If it was on television, it was in a good context. You, you remember shows you know, that, that always taught about family value, like Andy Griffith and Father Knows Best and the Donna Reed show and you know, Leave It to Beaver. All those things were teaching about family value, about what was right versus what was wrong. Right, right. But now, if you if you tune, and I don't I don't even have the uh, I don't have cable. I don't have the ability to watch 
watch on. We have Amazon current, Prime. Yeah, we have Amazon Prime. So, so I don't, I don't do current programs because the current programs they they dishonor God. They they trash anything to do with Christianity. Or family. And it's sad. And when you get into and and literally that's the spirit that's in the world that you, you try and share the gospel or you try and share with people and instead of people saying well thank you for sharing with me or you know or or even just you know saying well i just don't want to talk about that it's like an attack that happens look this isn't anything that anybody doesn't know i mean if you're living today yes. and you're breathing you've experienced this so we have the works of the flesh and if you read in galatians 5 you can you can uh, see what all those are it, I'm sure you can say in my heart, it's idolatry, fornication, adultery, um, you know, witchcraft, hatred, variant strife, seditions, heresies. It, it just goes on. Those we are, know what's in our flesh, right? right? And our flesh dwells no good thing. But the fruit of the Spirit, that's that other magnet, that pull. You know, just for instance, like, you, you know, we can say hatred or, you know, we may not think that, that we have that in us. But if someone has hurt you, sometimes it can develop into that. And so we, when we feel those feelings and, we, and they're not peaceful, then we know, okay, that's that flesh pull. That's that, right. that force that's trying not to the fruit of the draw spirit. me away from God. You know, the fruit of the Spirit, think about it. Fruit of the Spirit, if you have a fruit bowl in front of you, yes. and those things that are appealing to you, yes. right? And so it talks about that love, joy, peace. Long-suffering. Well, well, it, it, Gentleness, it, it, goodness, faith, meekness, <laughs> temperance. <laughs> Again, such there's no law. So anyway, what it's saying are, the are these things are what's good for you. And when those are at work in you, you find that peace. You you feel better. Yeah. But if, if, if and like Debbie was talking about hatred, that turns to bitterness. And then that can literally, they prove scientifically, that that can produce cancer, crippling arthritis. It's not the only thing that does that. But it can cause it because it releases a toxin, a chemical in right. your body. And I think about this because Paul talked about the struggle that we have between these two. You can't get away from the struggle. Everybody has a struggle. Yes. But what Paul does is Paul tells us how we, Paul tells us about the struggle, and then he tells us how we win the victory over the yes. struggle. Yes. This is found in Romans, the seventh chapter, and I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. I, I, I love the way that this is written here, so j just hang on with me here for a second. This is Paul speaking. He said, I, do, I, I don't really understand myself yeah. for what I want to do, what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to yes. do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. Yes. But there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? And then he answers it. Thank God. The answer is in yes. Jesus Christ, our Lord. He, he paints that scenario, and when you read that, you, you feel that, right? You feel that helplessness, and you yes. think, man, that's right. That's exactly right. I have that struggle. That goes on within me. But he doesn't leave you there. He lets you know that there's a bigger force there's yes. a, that, that can pull you in, and it's Jesus Christ. And he said, thank God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he pulls us out right. of the grip of Satan's clutches. Right. So you understand the pull of the world, you know, that we can get sucked into that. Right. But, you know, we feel that God drawing us back. You know, his word in James 4 and 8 says, draw close to God in the King James, draw near to God or the draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. But it's, it's what it's saying is draw close to me. Right. God, draw close to God and he will draw close to you. So have you ever felt those times when God was wooing you and drawing you with that magnetic pull, you know right. what I'm saying? It's like that you feel you that feel drawing. And there's been times that he would wake me up. I mean, I, I would wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and different times we would be at the church, and I would feel him tell me in my spirit, go into the sanctuary. And as soon as I, I mean, I just felt him drawing me, pulling me into mm -hmm. that place to get close to him and, and just 
be able to hear what he's saying and, right. and just pour my heart out before him. And so when I opened those doors, I could feel that just like sucking me in. And But he, he what he does is he's getting us closer right. to him that we can hear him plainly. And I, I, it made me think of this, and you may have shared it before in here, but I, I just uh, wanted you to share it again. When you felt God's draw and his pull. The, you know, when you feel that pull, there's a purpose for the pull. Yes. Say that with me. There's a purpose, purpose for, for the, the pull. pull. Oh. And so God is trying to pull you. And I, I and church was over. This, is, this was years ago when we were here at the home church. Church was over. We were getting ready to have dinner at uh, Debbie's mom and dad's house. And so someone had brought some tomatoes for us, and uh, I forgot them at the church, so I went back to the church to get them. And I went into the church. Everybody else is at Debbie's mom and dad's. They're, you know, they're preparing dinner. I went into the church, got the tomatoes, started to walk out, and I'm telling you that quick, I just stopped. I felt that pull. Yes. And it was, and I mean, it was so powerful. I just put the tomatoes down, and I went into a room, and I felt that pull about pray. I need you to yes, pray right yes. now. And so, man, I started praying, and it was an intense prayer meeting going on. I was praying in the Spirit, and all of a sudden, I saw like a light coming in and hitting Africa. And when I, I, I could see the continent of Africa, and I, I saw that light go down and hit that, and hit, it, it was a part of that nation. And when it did, all of a sudden, I felt a release and a lift and 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 it just stopped now I, I had prayed intently for probably about 10 minutes just I mean just intense and then I felt it lift and I felt like it's been answered yes and so I I left and I grabbed the tomatoes and I thought oh, they're probably gonna wonder what happened to me and I grabbed the tomatoes and I go back to the house and when I get to their house Debbie looked at me and she said who were you talking to and I laughed and I said well I was talking to God and she said, no, I mean on the phone. Now, this was before cell phones. This was when Ma Bell still had control. So, and I, I said, I wasn't talking to anybody on the phone. She said, well, I called out there and the phone was busy. We was hungry. We and I, I, I said, well, tomatoes. call out there now. I said, that phone's probably been left off the hook. And she called out and it started ringing. Yes. And I'm telling you, God <laughs> tied, up the line. tied the line up, man. And so when he wants, when he's pulling you, He's got a purpose for the pool, and he's wanting to talk to you. I can, this just comes to me. I remember many years ago, I felt I was you know, in bed, and the Lord just woke me up, and I came into the living room, and I just, I just laid down to pray. And I just felt such a, I just got lost in his presence. It was, it was amazing. It was precious. And I just said, Jesus, just give me a hug. Father, just give me a hug. Can you just give me a hug? And I wrapped my, I felt him tell me to wrap my arms around myself because it was just a love bath. And when, as soon as I did, I felt, I mean, an amazing sensation, that pool, that it was just precious. And I just began to, it was, I can't even explain that feeling. So the reality of his presence. Yes. Now, what about the drawing of your calling? Put a, right. put a heart up if you understand what I'm saying. It's, it's the drawing. The drawing of your of calling, your calling. You comes feel, from God. Right. It's Him pulling you toward that. Uh, and so the discovery, it generally happens unexpectedly. Usually when we are just faithfully serving Him, we feel that, you know, we know that there's a calling upon our life. And, and so He begins to share what that is. We, you know, we feel like we've been apprehended for a purpose. Yes. For a specific purpose. Now, everybody specific. understand that we all have a calling and we've been called to be witnesses. Right. But then there are times that God will specify the field that he wants us to be he a does. witness in. Where all of a sudden you, you, you may feel pulled to minister to young people. Or you may be, feel pulled to minister to the elderly. But, but you'll feel that and God is creating that pull on you. But there's also another drawing, and that comes from Satan. And that drawing is a drawing unto death. So there's a scripture that says... So here's, here's what we have to think, is that we that are being drawn by God must rescue those that are being drawn by Satan, right? So if God is drawing you, it's not for us to just camp out over here. We have to rescue those. Yes. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture that talks about it. 
Proverbs 24 and 11 says, Deliver those who are drawn toward death and hold back those stumbling to the slaughter. And so that those are the people that the other draw, that other force that they feel themselves, you know, because the enemy's out to kill them. And so right. whether it may be through drugs or, you know, wrong choices, but he's then God's calling us, you know, to, uh, we can do that now. No, I've got a spot here. Okay. okay. But that's what he's, he's calling us to, you know, once he's called us, it's like now go after those that are drawn right. toward death. And so um, if push, you know what push means, right? We've, we know what the acrostic for push right. is. It's pray until something happens. Well, just during this lesson, the Lord just spoke this word, pull. And so I'm going to give you an acrostic on pull. We're going to say that it's pray until load lifts, till the load lifts. And that's what you do when you feel that pull. What do we do? We, we go to the magnet, to the main force, and right. we just, God, you know, and call. But anyway, when I just heard this word mag magnetic or the magnetic pull, I just opened my daily uh, Jesus calling, and it says, The most effective way to resist evil is to draw near to me. The world is so complex and overstimulating that you can easily lose your sense of direction. Doing countless unnecessary activities will dis dissipate your energy. When you spend time with me, I restore your sense of direction. As you look to me to guide for guidance, I enable you to do less but accomplish more. Oh, Can you good. imagine that? Do less but accomplish more. Right. Let's skip that part. Let's just go to the last part of this. So let me let me talk to you about. Uh, you remember when we talked about the magnet and we talked about that how it, it becomes magnetized is there's an electromagnetic field. They charge it. So we talked about that we have a pull to us, that there's like two different pulls to us, one that is to the spirit and the other to the flesh. So here's, here's the problem. It's like if, if God is reaching for us and we are... We've got the charge of the flesh in us. Then, as he comes close to us, we're trying to get away from him. Can you see that? Yeah, that's neat. So you that's know, neat. he he gets close to us, and and we just run away from him. So how do we change that? Well, you have to repent. Everybody say repent. And what that means is turn over a new leaf, right? That we go back. We we turn back from what we've been doing. So once that flip is made in our life, then what we discover is that we're no longer running from God, but we're being pulled toward God. And That's now right. we become so tight with God that it yes. looks like we're one with the Father, right? And so, and, and it becomes very difficult for anyone to pull us inseparable. out of this. We presence. want to be inseparable. Look, someone just said, I can't see their name on top, can you? But it says, push is what happens when Brother Rick... When you, uh, when Brother Rick, you go to us, you take you us, on, us a mission on those trip. mission trips. So. I can't see good. <laughs> I push. I, so I wanted to we share. pray until something happens, so we push until something gets done. Yeah, okay. that's right. So, that's very, that's so really good. the scripture talks about, think about this. That, let, let me see the notes thing. I thought you were done. No, I, I got a whole note here, man. So the scripture said, you know, we, we pray. That's a force that draws us to him, and we mix that with the word. Now, when we mix those elements, remember the strongest part of the magnet is iron. iron. So iron, the scripture says iron sharpens iron. The word of God is what? What does it say? The word of God is sharper, sharper. than any two-edged sword. What is a sword made of? Iron. The iron. sword's made of iron. In the Old Testament, the Philistines were defeating the Israelites because they had no blacksmith. They didn't have a way to make an iron sword. And, but now the word of God yes. is that sword. So think about this. When we share his word, when we share his word with others, it pulls them to him. The scripture said that if I be lifted up. Now that's a magnet. Now that, that it says that if I be lifted up. Look at you this. see that? It says if I be lifted up, I draw all men into me. So how do we lift him up? We lift him up by sharing his word with others. And when we do that. And we begin to lift him up, then all of a sudden his presence comes. And as his presence comes down, he grabs hold and he won't let go. And he begins to Look pull that. the yeah. people up to him. I'm telling you that God wants us to be, I'm sorry, we pin our face. God, <laughs> God wants us to become 
that individual that is lifting him up so men and women will be drawn to that's him. Right. That's right. That's right. Take that. We're going to pray right now. <laughs> we need prayer after that, right? So the, here's what I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray that you feel that pull inside your heart and that pull becomes so real to you that all of a sudden now God begins to use you yes, to, to pull him. others to oh, him. Wow. And all we've got to do is lift him up. When we lift him up, they're yeah. naturally drawn to him. We pull them that are drawn to death. We pull them out by lifting Jesus up. Father, I thank you for your word because your word is truth and it's life and it's powerful. And I just pray today, Father, Lord, that God, just like all those things that make up the magnet dwell in our body physically, Lord, that those elements are in us. Yes. God, you created us to be drawn to you. I just pray, Father, that yes. you, God, supercharge yes. us with the power of your Holy Spirit so that we're drawn to you and not run yes. from you. And then help us to lift you up so others will be drawn to you. We ask in Jesus' yes, name. Yes, amen. We love you guys. We love you Remember, all. you are magnetic. So yes. go out there and pull someone in for Jesus. That's right. Have a great we evening. Bye-bye.